Schlieffen really is awesome. I'm gonna make some mistakes in this game and end up losing most of my HP, but we're still gonna have a great game anyway, even after losing so much HP so early. I've switched up my build slightly for this game. I've actually dropped IFHE and I'm running Brisk instead. This ship is so fast, especially with Brisk, and I think that helps this ship play just a little bit better and a little easier for myself. I find the Schlieffen to be incredibly strong in the right situation. And in all others, I find it kind of mediocre and weak. So getting myself into those really overpowered positions quickly and being able to adapt to what the enemy team is doing more quickly with Brisk, I think is very, very useful. It's not something I'm going to run long-term unless I find this works for an extended period of time. I've really only played with it a few matches, but so far I've really enjoyed the extra speed that allows me to reposition and move myself around the map. Schlieffen, of course, has insane concealment for how much close range firepower it has. Having that extra secondary range matching pretty much your concealment is just too strong. I wish instead of nerfing the reload on the secondaries, they would have nerfed the concealment, giving a little more buffer to the uh, secondaries so people don't just instantly find themselves having to deal with them. But that's not what this video is about. I'm gonna lose a lot of HP to a Holland and a Shikishima. Overmatch and torpedoes. Here is the Shikishima. You'll notice we're over five minutes into this game and I've done literally nothing. <laughs> I've just been wandering around with Brisk trying to find a good position. This Holland actually is going to manage to sneak torpedoes through this gap, which I wasn't expecting, which I should have been, uh, but I wasn't. So we're gonna eat some of those really quick. But what's nice about these secondaries, at least right here, is they're shooting over this island and they're gonna get some decent damage in on the Shikoshima to start with. Of course, without having IFHE, we're not penning 32 millimeters, but we're gonna be penning most other places, right? With 26 millimeters of pen on the smaller secondaries and over 32 on the big ones, we are gonna get some good damage in. And more importantly, we don't reduce our fire chance by a whole lot. So theoretically, we are gonna get a lot of fire damage. In this game, I don't believe that ends up happening. We still do some insane damage with our secondaries. Schlieffen, of course, hates torpedoes, and that really comes down to its low HP pool, and, well, you're really not having a lot of healing. Only four heals with this current build that I have, so I gotta try and avoid those as much as possible, which is why I'm kind of backing up, trying to stay safe from this overmatch and these torpedoes. I am trying to learn how to play more passive. I'm trying to learn not to just push in and go brawl. I have a very difficult time doing that because I find it boring to just sit here for what is now, what, eight minutes? <laughs> Seven minutes, I guess. It's, uh, it's tough because that's a long time to be doing nothing. I would much rather have the game start a little sooner, which is why I really do enjoy Dirigible Derby and I play that game mode quite a lot. This one though, I decided to play a random battle game to see how it goes. You're gonna also notice that we actually end up shooting down a ton of planes in this one. And I wouldn't read too much into that. Schlieffen AA really isn't that good. We're just fighting against a tier eight German carrier and German carriers, if you didn't know, have very fast squishy planes. And given he's two tiers lower than us, we have some pretty big advantages on the AA front. The instant you run into a tier 10 though, it's not gonna go so well. And of course the carrier is still gonna get some drops in us, but it's not gonna be as bad as it would have been at tier 10. So we're gonna get away with pushing in a little bit more. Stealth secondary is always a pretty hilarious moment when you can get those running. This Holland is trying to take a fight with our Kaba, which is probably smart since our Kaba is pretty low at this point. Our team has overcommitted, I would say, into this A flank, losing a couple ships already. It's tough because Schlieffen is such a great pushing ship and it's such a great kiting ship, but in these open water scenarios where you're pushing into the enemy's spawn, I really don't find it 
performs particularly well, which is why I've tried to go to this island here. And I'm gonna try and keep a reasonable angle to the Kansas and the Freddy, since if we give too much broadside, they are gonna do some massive damage. It's very tough though, since getting all of my guns on target is a priority, trying to get all the damage as possible out, but that opens us up to take some pretty massive hits in return. So I'm deciding to bow in and angle here. Importantly though, I am only bow into the island. I'm actually not going bow into the enemy ships. And this opens us up to potential torpedoes. I didn't expect the Holland to come out a little bit wider after killing the Kaba, and that's exactly what he's gonna do. So even though we have Hydro up, we're gonna take some huge hits from the Holland torpedoes coming in. And the other problem is the Shikishima has just taken out our Iowa in our spawn area, or at least on our side of the map. So reversing here, is a pretty bad idea, but I actually don't notice this yet. Only now do I notice that the Shikishima is potentially going to have shots on my side. I was expecting to be able to reverse into this gap or at least reverse back out of this situation if need be. And that's of course when those Holland torpedoes come. I need to do a little better job of protecting these torps. Now we're left with 15,000 HP. We're gonna heal up to around 20 or a little bit more, I guess. And we're not gonna have a lot of more HP because torpedoes, of course, cannot be healed back to 100%. In fact, very little of torpedo damage can be healed unless you take that damage on your bow or your stern. So we took a lot into our torpedo protection, so our heal is only about half of what it would normally be, which is really, really rough when we still have a lot of work to do in this game. The enemy has two caps and a ship advantage. So it's on our team to push in and try and make something happen. What's really, really fortunate though, the enemy team decides to get a little more aggressive. It's a pretty common problem in random battles and in this game, the idea that you have to win harder. So we're gonna take advantage of that. There's a Azuma who just does not expect us to be here, I think. We get spotted a little bit earlier than I would have thought but our secondaries are gonna absolutely rip into this guy. We do not need IFHE to full pen, even with our small secondary. So yeah, they're gonna chew them up real good. <laughs> and of course the main guns are capable of overmatching Azuma as well. So that is a pretty quick kill and getting us a little closer to even in this game. Holland, of course, pops up within our secondary range. This is why I've talked about secondaries being a bit of an aura of damage, and I think Schlieffen being a little bit too strong with that aura of damage, not really having any sort of uh, window or notification that you're going to take that damage, at least initially. I obviously have been here for quite some time, so Holland would have known that I'm around, but having that insane concealment combined with this really, really strong secondary firepower means there's really no warning for initially for ships that you're going to be somewhere and they're going to take a ton of damage from these secondaries that really you can't dodge like a more traditional ship would be able to. It's just going to be peppering the ocean around your ship and hitting you some of the time. I don't really find Schlieffen torpedoes to be very effective at longer ranges. I usually just toss them out into ch channels and I hope that they hit something, but they're so slow <laughs> that uh, most of the time that's not gonna work. But they do have long range and they do okay damage. So tossing them out is not a huge problem to do. I just find that they don't end up being the most effective. The incomparable is within our secondary range, but he's gonna be a problem since Incomparable has better concealment than us. That's one of the massive strengths of the Schlieffen, is that for the most part, you catch a battleship within your secondary range, you're gonna be able to spot them permanently, and those secondaries are gonna have a massive opportunity to rip into them, and hopefully win that engagement, assuming it's more of a 1v1 fair-ish fight. <laughs> not that there's really fair fights in this game, let's be honest. When you're within Schlieff and secondary range, it's not really that fair. <laughs> but it is a good way to deal with enemy ships. Kansas gets a decent hit, but not actually too much. Probably aimed a little low and went into our belt. We're up to 100k damage. 
But look at how little we can heal at this point. We have one heal left and we're under 20,000 HP. And we're still down on points and caps. But at least our team is seemingly going to deal with the Shikishima in the north. So that gives me the green light to push out here. And the one time I happen to hit a torpedo in my Schlieffen, it actually comes in super clutch to help me live in this situation. This Kansas would have been able to get another salvo off at me or even got his front guns at me. It's likely I would have died here. But that torpedo salvo forced him to turn to try and avoid it. And he still ended up eating one and he goes down. So does the Shikishima. I was constantly checking where the Shikishima was since giving Shikishima broadside is a recipe for disaster. That's a great way to lose your ship. And now we are up on kills by quite a lot, but we're still down on caps. At least we have some destroyers that are hopefully going to get into those positions. And now it's a bit of a 1v1, me and this incomparable. And this is where I was shocked, actually. I was like, I got this guy. This is the classic Schlieffen. I win this engagement because you're within my secondary range. And then he goes dark. <laughs> I totally forgot about Incomparable's amazing concealment. I just assumed that this was going to be okay. And because his concealment is so good and he gets to go undetected, that actually is enough time, most of the time, assuming he doesn't uh, shoot instantly, to reset or partially reset our secondary accuracy, making them even less effective than they would be since there is that uh, build-up period of accuracy. So if this guy had taken his time and not shot quite as much, he would have been fully resetting my secondaries. And of course, we have a carrier to deal with. But like I said, we got either very lucky in this game or against very low tier carriers. Schlieffen has just barely good enough AA to avoid multiple drops. That's really what it comes down to, what I really look for from AA is the hope that you don't actually get dropped multiple times by the same squad. It's one of the reasons the Russian carriers are so strong. They don't actually want to get multiple drops off on you because they have that one alpha strike kind of squad. We're forced to turn in to the torpedo bombers, of course. We want to go bow in or stern in to torpedo bombers and the rocket planes. And of course, dive bombers, we want to drop our broadside since they're more of an oval shape that wants to go from the bow or the stern. It's not the easiest thing to set up dodging carriers, especially when you bring in other ships. But we do manage to take down the incomparable, getting us up to 150,000 damage, which is getting close to 100k more than we had when we took all those torpedoes. So Schlieffen, even on such low HP, is still able to do work in the right situation. And that just shows, I think, how strong this ship can be in the right scenario. Even with low to no health, you're still able to do some massive damage and get a lot of work done to help the team win. Whereas I think a lot of other battleships at low health probably end up dying before they get to do this much damage since their concealment isn't good enough. And of course, they're not as quick and agile to dodge some salvos. That's what I was doing a lot of was rudder shift movements to try and bait the incomparable into missing or hitting my belt armor. The superstructure, of course, is also a little smaller, which helps a lot as well. It's one of the major weaknesses of the uh, Pommern and the GK and all the other uh, German battleships. They're all got a giant superstructure where Schlieffen doesn't really have to worry about that. So we managed to even live getting ourselves four kills and nearly 200,000 damage. And 500 secondary hits without IFHE still did 90,000 damage. We got nine fires too, but unfortunately it seems like they were all repaired right before, uh, right after we lit them. So we didn't get a lot of damage out of the fires, but still no IFHE on the secondaries. That's a lot of damage. And we get the bonus of brisk, giving us so much speed to reposition in the early game. And that really is the idea with this build, trying to get the Schlieffen into those overpowered positions where nothing really challenges this ship's strengths. And Brisk really helps me get to those places quicker and maybe away from bad positions for this ship a little faster as well. Since even when running away from the enemy team, if they're 
pushing really hard and I need to get out of a bad spot, oftentimes I will end up going dark some of the time. I'm probably getting spotted by a destroyer or a carrier plane, and those aren't going to be spotting me all the time, assuming that I have some teammates around as well to pressure the destroyer and maybe shoot down some aircraft as well. So Brisk, I think, is a very interesting option for a ship like the Schlieffen, since it gets really, really, really quick when using that buff. Of course, I'm still running full secondaries on this thing. I'd consider maybe running main battery mod three, but the secondaries are just too strong on this ship. So I think it is worth going full secondaries on this thing. On some of the other secondary battleships, I don't think the secondaries are quite as good, which is why I would move towards a main gun build or a hybrid build a little bit more often, since they're not quite good enough to carry your ship to, well, 90k extra damage like we got in this game. So that's the Schlieffen. I think this ship and the entire line is a ton of fun and borderline overpowered in the right situations. And getting into those situations can be a little bit difficult, but it certainly is a very fun ship to play when you get those opportunities. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.